Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany. Today I'm coming at you with another hot cocoa bomb video, the first of this season, but it's going to be a little bit different this time because I will be using a polycarbonate mold rather than silicone, and I'll be using all couverture chocolate instead of compound chocolate and candy melts which means these are going to be the most delicious hot chocolate bombs yet. And for decorating, I will just be using white chocolate and I'll be making some spider webs. So let's get started. Here are the supplies that you'll need. And remember, I always link these in the description box. Tempered Couverture Dark Chocolate. I used the seeding method for my dark chocolate. Check out the video above to learn how. Tempered Couverture White Chocolate. I used the microwave method for my white chocolate. Check out the video above to learn how. A polycarbonate half sphere mold. I'm using Chocolate World 2253. If you can't find this exact same one, you can find one similar. My openings are almost two and three fourths inches in diameter. A mini spatula like this or something similar with a soft point. A chocolate scraper tool. Some parchment paper sheets. Some parchment paper piping bags. Check out the video above to see how to make these. Food safe gloves. A sheet tray. A small round cookie cutter. This will help you with assembling the cocoa bombs. Mine's about one and three fourths inches diameter. And some hot chocolate powder and anything else you wanna hide inside like marshmallows. So to prepare your hot cocoa bomb polycarbonate mold, I'm just going to take a cotton ball and like buff it. <laughs> this will make sure it's shiny and there's nothing along the surface. Of course, it should be clean. To clean this, you can just use hot water with um, mild soap. So I just go in each cavity and I'm just using a dry cotton ball. It doesn't have to have anything on it. It's just to shine up the surface. So for the spider web design, I'm going to take my tempered white chocolate Pour it into a piping bag. Cut a small hole. Not too small, not too big. What I'm going to do, starting in the center and bottom of the mold, I'm going to do a spiral all the way up. And then, before the chocolate starts setting, I'm going to take a little mini spatula. You don't want to use a, a hard surface because you don't want to scratch your mold. So I'm using this mini spatula. And I'm going to pull up. You're starting in the center and pulling up out. Like this. That's what it looks like. And then I'm going to do that in the next one. And you can play around with how you like the spacing. If you like the spiral to be super close together and then how far apart you like to do the pull lines. You can just experiment and decide how you want to do it. Thank <laughs> you. 
That one's a little crooked. <laughs> it doesn't matter though. It's kind of hard to see the way I'm looking, how I'm filming, but you get the point. And then pull it up like this. And so I'm done. I'm only going to do uh, one side of the hot cocoa bomb. And it'll end up kind of looking like the spider web is like um, just hanging over one half of the sphere. Now my webs are all ready. And so I'm going to fill these three with dark only and these three with dark on top. And then these will be pairs like this. And so I really want the white chocolate to be really nice and set up before I put the dark chocolate on top. So I'm going to pop these in the fridge for about 20 minutes before I fill the mold. All right, so my mold has been in the fridge for about 15 minutes and I have some tempered dark chocolate. It's about 32 degree, well, it's 31.2 degrees. And I'm just going to fill each cavity all the way to the top. I'm just using a one cup measuring cup. You can use a ladle or a cup. And I have a piece of parchment paper underneath. That's where I'll be dumping my chocolate. You can dump it back in your bowl if you want, but I'm just going to dump it on the parchment. Before I do that, I'm going to knock out the air bubbles by tapping the side. and tipping it upside down. And gently knocking it out to help the chocolate flow out. I'm going to scrape it. Check the thickness. To me, it looks good. So, I gotta clean off my scraper here. And I'm going to scrape it again. So it's clean. And I'm going to put it upside down on this parchment until it sets up just a little bit more and then I'll pop it in the fridge. Now I'm only doing this in case it continues to flow down so that it stops and I don't lose too much chocolate. And then I'll give it one more scrape before putting it in the fridge to fully set up. I'm sure it's done flowing now. So see how it continued for just a minute. I'm going to scrape it clean, make sure it's really clean, but before it sets so that I don't ruin them, and into the fridge. All right, these have been in the fridge for 20 minutes. They should be ready to take out. We will see how well they do. And they're a little tricky since they don't have fillings. You don't wanna like creak the mold too much cause you don't wanna break them, but you do wanna loosen them up. And if they're ready, they should just come right out like that. And they did, so that's great. <laughs> it's always a good sign. <laughs> and they should be really shiny and pretty. Oh, I love the feeling of pulling those out. The spheres are so fun because you just grab the edge like this and you just slide them. They're so fun, okay. Now, those are our shells, and I will show you how to fill them and assemble the cocoa bombs next. Now, here's how I like to set up my little hot cocoa bomb making station. I have a 
circle cookie cutter to hold my bomb up while I put it together. I've got my hot cocoa mix and some marshmallows, my shells over here, and then I have a sheet tray in the oven at 190 degrees getting warm, and I will use that to help me melt the bombs and glue them together. Oh, there's a buzzer. Um, it's reached 190, so let's pull it out and make our first bomb. So I've got my gloves on and I take my, my two shells, one plain dark and one with the web. I'm going to gently melt the bottom and quickly add in the hot cocoa little handful of marshmallows, and then melt the top layer. You wanna work fast so that the chocolate stays melty, so that when you plop it on the top, there's enough melted chocolate to glue it together. And then I like to just take my glove and smooth the seam over, like that. So there's one finished hot cocoa bomb. I just set it aside. Now for the last one, I have some leftover chocolate skeleton pieces <laughs> from a couple weeks ago. So I'm going to hide some of those in and just see what happens when we melt it just for fun. So I'm lining it up and then I'm gently pressing down to add a little bit of pressure to connect them and then just gently cleaning off the edge. Trying not to move it. And then just let it set up. I am loving these minimal Halloween designs that are full quality chocolate. No messing around this time with a bunch of different colors. So let's see how they do. It's time for the funnest part. All right guys, that is today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. If you did, please let me know by giving it a like and also leaving me a comment. Remember, it helps me out a lot. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, today's the day. If you'd like to see something else that's spooky and sweet, just click on one of these thumbnails. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you soon, bye.